Hi, I'm Jacob Johnson, a researcher at Berkeley Lab specializing in windows. This video will focus on window optics. Controlling visible light transmittance, solar heat gain, and thermal insulation of a window is key for making it energy efficient. These properties are coupled, and to understand that coupling, it is helpful to look at the optical properties of window materials. Light interacts with matter according to three main pathways, transmittance, reflectance, and absorptance. Transmittance is a material property defined as the fraction between the amount of transmitted light and incident light. This is a unitless number between 0 and 1, but is sometimes expressed as a percentage. Reflectance and absorptance are material properties defined the same way. Every material has different values of transmittance, reflectance and absorptance for each wavelength of light. For each wavelength, energy must be conserved, which means that T plus R plus A equals 1. The goal of modern window design is to have control over T, R and A in different wavelength ranges. Sunlight is divided in three bands, ultraviolet, visible and near-infrared. Room temperature heat radiation is contained between 5000 to 50,000 nanometers and that band is called thermal infrared. Glass is mostly transparent to sunlight but is opaque to thermal infrared light whereas metals are opaque to most wavelengths from sunlight, but highly reflective. T-sol is a single number that represents the fraction of sunlight transmitted, and a way to represent the spectral curve as a single number. The total incident energy is visualized by the dark green area under the solar intensity curve. The total energy passing through a clear glass is the light green area. The ratio between the two areas is a single unitless number, which is the solar transmittance. This gives a single value describing how much solar radiation is transmitted through a material. A similar method is used to calculate single values for reflectance and absorptance. A common component of modern energy efficient windows is low emissivity, or low E, glass. Such a glass pane gets a very thin metal coating on top to produce a pane which is transparent to visible light but still reflects near-infrared and thermal infrared light. This allows for partially independent control over how the window interacts with visible light and with heat radiation. The optical property that impacts the U-value the most is the thermal IR emissivity. All objects emit thermal radiation, with its wavelength distribution dependent on the temperature of the object. The emissivity is a scaling factor that represents how much of this radiation an object emits or absorbs when compared to an ideal object that absorbs all incident radiation. A low emissivity means that less heat is lost or gained through radiation from that surface. In a fascinating physical symmetry, the mechanism in the material that radiates light is the same that absorbs light. So if you know the absorption at a given wavelength, you also know the emissivity at that wavelength, as they are the same. A single emissivity number is calculated similar to how a single solar transmittance value is calculated. So, how does all this help me with my window design? If we can tailor a window's wavelength properties, then we can have greater control over the key metrics of the visible transmittance, solar heat gain coefficient, and the U-value of a window. These values enable us to rank, predict, and simulate how different windows perform in different buildings and climates. At Berkeley Lab, we maintain the International Glazing Database, a database of glass properties storing transmittance and reflectance as a function of wavelength for more than 5,000 glass products. This data is used by software tools such as Window to calculate the compound optical properties obtained when two or more panes are combined into a single window. Check out our latest research at our website. If you have ideas, we would love to hear from you. You can also find the US Department of Energy's R&D goals for Windows at their website. We hope this overview has been helpful. To learn more, visit Berkeley Lab online or view the next video.